Welcome to our review on how to write formulae. The first thing that we actually need to understand then is the real basics about chemical formulae. So the first thing that hopefully we know from looking at the periodic table is that every chemical symbol that occurs on there has either one, two or three letters. And generally that's been decided based on has one letter already been used. Whenever you're writing these chemical symbols, then the first thing to remember is that whatever that first letter is must be written as a capital letter. If it has a second letter, then it's got to be a lowercase. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, on your exam paper, it will be marked wrong if you put two capitals in. When we take metals as our first example of the formula we need to write, then when we remember that these occur as giant metallic lattices, we're not going to be writing the actual formula including all the numbers of the atoms present because what we'd end up with is this giant long list of very, very long numbers. So what we actually do instead is we write metals as their empirical formula, so as their simplest ratio. That's why when we generally write metals, you will find it will be Mg or Zn, just the symbol on its own. It's the empirical formula. Now, as I've said, the reason we don't use the numbers, it'd be very large, first of all, and you'd also find that that symbol would then change depending on how much metal was present, because obviously that number would refer to the number of atoms. And what we find is if you've got a gold bar of different sizes, like in the picture below, then each different size bar has a different number of atoms, yet it's all still just made of gold. So we just write it as AU, the empirical formula for it. If we now consider some of the non-metal elements, so the ones on the right hand side of the periodic table, if we look at group zero first of all, so the noble gases. Now these ones actually exist as individual atoms, so when you write their formulae it will just be HE or NE, so they don't have any numbers associated. If we then go one column left of there to group seven, which are the halogens, then these actually exist as what's called diatomic molecules. Now, diatomic just means two atoms in the molecule. So di meaning two and atomic obviously referring to the atoms. So what we actually have there is this really important point to remember that if ever you are writing any of the group seven elements, you've always got to put that little subscript two. This is one of the most common ways that you can lose marks on several different questions associated with them, because if obviously you don't have the diatomic molecule written, your balancing will never work. So remember, group seven elements always exist as diatomic molecules. And the same can be said for oxygen as well. It's not just the metals that we need to consider using the empirical formula for. There are other non-metal elements that exist as those giant covalent structures as we've seen in our earlier chemistry topic. So any of those, like carbon, for example, that exist as a giant covalent structure, again, we write them as their empirical formula. So just the C on its own. If, however, we're looking at phosphorus, that is a slightly different scenario. That one is always shown as P with the little subscript for. The last thing we're going to look at in this little summary is just looking at the molecular formula. Now, whenever we're actually talking about the molecular formula of something, then it's going to show us two important bits of information. First one are the actual elements that are present, so it uses the symbols for them. And the second thing is it tells us how many atoms of each element are present. So we would know from our example here of carbon dioxide, because it has the formula CO2, then that tells us it's made up of carbon and oxygen. There's one carbon atom and two oxygens. So one of the really common questions on the old specification used to be asking how many different elements are actually present within a chemical. And the easiest way to do that is count how many capital letters there are that are unique. And then it would also have a second question on there worth a mark as well for how many atoms make up a certain formula. So in this case, because we've got two oxygen and one carbon, we have three atoms.